Hi folks, in this video we're going to take a look at Boris FX Optics 2024. Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick, a commercial photographer based in the west of Ireland. I do a lot of talking about Lightroom and Photoshop, but today we're going to talk about a plugin called Boris FX Optics. Boris FX are known for doing movie plugins. If you've seen their JJ Abrams flares and stuff like that, they're responsible for it. Optics is their still photography plugin. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, it was Tiffin DFX and then became Digital Film Tools. Uh, and then it got combined with Sapphire to become Optics. And then Particle Illusion was added in the previous version to give even more effects. It's just amazing and really, really fun. This time around, they've added a few new things like a smoke and fog that evolves, prisms, atmospheric glow and a few things like that. We're going to actually go have a look at them now. It's a worthwhile update, definitely worth getting. And the key thing about optics has always been fun, fun and creativity. And this has this in buckets and spades full. So let's have a look. Let's let's start off by diving in and actually do a little bit of work on it. So we're actually going to go filter and we come down here to Boris effects and just open optics. It used to have 2023 on it before. Now it just literally says optics. Now this is uh, open in the other window. It's also letting me know that I'm still on the trial version. So I'm just going to bring it across to this window. And I've turned off the option to turn on the previous layers, which comes up every time you open it. Because I want to show you stuff from scratch, basically, with this, right? So we're going to talk about the new stuff that's inside it. Okay, so we could start off with uh, Magic Sharp, which is a sharpening thing, which we're just going to show you really quickly. Uh, so Magic Sharp is here. Let me just pull these up because the screen that was on is bigger, so they don't quite fit. So we can hear it straight away that this has made this ridiculously sharp. So let me just do an A, B on it here and uh, zoom in. Right. So we can see here the before and the after. Look how much sharper that is. So much more detail, um, but it doesn't look crunchy at the same time. Right. It, it's actually really, really nice. OK, so that's just to show you that really quickly in passing. I'm not going to use that because uh, we're doing creative stuff here, but I just wanted to let you know that it was there in the first place. But I'm going to actually start with I'm going to start off with smoke and fog. Now, you notice that I am, because I know the names of the filter, it's actually much quicker for me to come in and just search for it in this little filter bar. Now, I have been using PI smoke, which is the particle illusion smoke, um, but now we have smoking fog, which is an ever evolving one. So let's just go back to the normal one and just go back to fit. So we can see here that we've got a little bit of fog. So this is evolving, right? And the key thing to remember about a lot of these effects is that because they came from video, they're time based effects. So if we come to time, we drag along here, we can see that we have motion happening within the smoke. OK, so there's a lot of stuff that's going on with it. We have smoke here. And there we go. So that'll do there for that look there, I think. So that's uh, kind of on front. But what we can do now is we can actually come in here again, create a new layer and do exactly the same thing. Uh, do the search. It'll remember the last search. Right. So if we want here, we can come in and we can make a change with smoke and fog if we wanted. Right, so we can make it a bit stronger um, and we can make it, we can scale it to make it different. OK. Um, and we can bring the fog opacity down instead. Uh, how's our density? What model do we want to use? Storm, blob. So these just give you different looks. So now what we're doing is we have two different looks here. With this one here, we're going to grab very quickly the mask uh, and go for easy mask. And so with a left click, we paint green. Say these are the areas we want to keep. And then with a right click, we paint red. These are the areas that we where we don't want it. Now I'm just going to be kind of rough with it. I'm not being pretty particularly dramatic because I have it in front and behind. So it doesn't matter. You click on the cog and it creates the mask. And to get away from viewing the mask, you'll click on the actual image on the layer in a second. OK. And that's showing it there. So we kind of have the smoke and fog that's here. So if we say, well, you know, the, the original smoke, well, we could do a bit more of it. So we can come in here on the original, sorry, back here on the original smoke, and we could add a little bit more of that. So that's the smoke that's on front. And then this is the smoke that's behind. And we can say, well, you know, there's actually too much of that. And so we can bring down the opacity here. Uh, sorry, I'm that's the wrong one. It's the other one we want. 
So we can have that mix of the two of them there. So we got smoke on front and smoke behind as well. The mask is basically putting it behind. So let's move on with other ones. So we click new layer for the layer and we're going to go to filters. Now we did search this already um, and you have orbs. So you just search for orbs. Uh, the default orb is actually really, really cool. And um, it's got some nice settings. Now, the way the orb is, is that it's actually kind of not seeing the mask in a, in a kind of a weird way. Um, so it's interacting slightly weirdly with the mask there at the moment from what's happening here. Uh, what it is, is it's just that it's working across the pattern of lace here. So it just looks really weird because it's overlaying the lace, but in actual fact, it's, it's actually working properly. So I'm actually going to jump down here to flicker. So we can see here that the mask looks okay there. It's just that the spikes look a little bit weird coming out of the actual um, the crown. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Right, so we can change what's going on with the settings of this in parameters. So we have all of these different things like count, so that's the number of ones we're seeing. The illumination radius, radius we can invert the illumination if we wanted. Um, you have different things like your light source position, the scale, the scale randomness. Uh, so you, they'll have be different sizes, all that kind of stuff. So let's say we bring the scale randomness up. Okay, we can see we've got a, a more variety of size. If we bring up the scale, we see that we're making them bigger. Now they're around their center point. Okay, so if I wanted to, the light source is here. So if I pull it around, we can see that where it is positionally, we can see that it's moving around on the image. And um, so but the other thing we can do is we can change the depth blur. So that means we can see here that some of these are blurred. Some of them are in focus, some of them are not. Uh, the fall off as well. And of course, we have intensity too. We can make them more intense and then we can have randomness in that intensity as well. So I'm bringing this up. Uh, we can change the color, which if we want, we're not going to do that. Um, so the blend mode, blend mode here is screen and then there's an input blend mode as well, uh, which, which also could be like lighten or, sorry, lighten, dark and screen difference, scale, multiply. It's pretty much all of them as well. Some different ones, add, subtract and overlays. And um, so let's go back to this one, which is none. So we're getting the full effect, basically. Let's continue by bringing the number down. So let's let's put it to be 200. So we immediately see there's less of them. Now, the one thing that I'd like to be able to do is move them around. I'd like there to be a positioning. Uh, so I think if I go with time, time might give us a different positioning, kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so I'm liking that there kind of helping in with the face it's just like pure pure um, good luck I suppose that it's not really hitting in the face there now we could mask off some of them there uh, in this case I think it's one of the situations where we'll just uh, bring a mask in and just literally uh, brush it in so paint and we'll invert it uh, and then what we can do is we can just just get it off the face here and do we have a feather on it how soft is it? Yeah, so that's really, really soft. So we can just like let it go off there so that it's not as strong just on the face. Just paint it very gently because I'm not trying to get rid of all of them. Just have a little bit of protection on it there. So that's the face just protected there as well. All right, so that's some of the orbs. As you can see, they're really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing, right? I've actually gone around photographing out of focus street lights. Uh, Christmas lights and stuff like that to use as effects inside um, as backgrounds and textures and stuff like that. So it's great that it's it's there. It saves me getting wet <laughs> in the middle of winter. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new layer. And on this layer, we're going to look uh, at prisms. Now, prisms are going to be harder to see. We might be as well starting with a new one, um, but we will have a look and we'll go from there. Prism. All right, so you have two now. You've got prism and prism lenses. Right, we go with prism effects initially. So this is given the effect as if you were looking through a prism. So you've got various different colors you can have, zoom rays, and you've got angle stuff, and all sorts of swirls and samples, which you can see here. So the default is kind of giving you the look of, it's nearly like, like a twirl lens. Okay, so let's bring some of the positions out here. All right, by moving around, we can create the color separation that you can get in a prism. Um, we don't want to do it too much, just a little bit there. 
And that's kind of moving where our prism is coming from a little bit. Okay. And then the other one, I think, is our center. Is it? Okay. Yeah. There we go. So that will give us a sharp center with a little bit of prism working on there. Um, and now can we exaggerate the colors a bit more from there so we can see they're getting more of an exaggeration on the color from there with the prism, which is really cool. So let me keep that in here for a second and create a new layer. And again, we'll go for pr prism. At this time, we're going to go for prism lens. Now, this is where you could bring in literally and are you using the reflections of the prisms to do stuff. So let me just, I'm just going to pop through um, presets for you there so you can get an idea of what you can do with it. Um, I'm not going to play too much with this because it's, uh, you know, a stretchy, stretchy time stuff, full reset. Okay, radial uh, corner mask. So, yeah, so it's just basically reflecting the corners like you would have if you're using the different types of prism. I like there's, there's fractals do these as well, which do a really, really cool job. And you're kind of, it's literally like holding them up in front of the lens. And then you, you, you physically move the the actual prism into position to get them to do this. So this just means you're able to do it on the computer without actually having to try and hold the camera, hold the lens, try and get everything just right in camera. There's a few other things as well that I'm just going to mention very briefly. Um, we'll just go over this one with it. Um, and that is we have a thing called Super LED. So this will give you LED effects um, as if this was like on an LED screen. So I'm just going to show you them very briefly. Uh, so like it's literally just to show us if you wanted to put something in as if it was like on an LED base, base screen. Um, and there's also ultra grain, which will give you digital grain. Uh, ultra grain. That's basically it there. You just come in with your different grains and so it's emulating some of the, the grains from like different cameras as well. Uh, basically, so you want the grain from uh, an A7S, that, that's going to give you a, a digital representation of that grain. Uh, the, what's left, really? That's kind of it. The other thing that's kind of left is atmospheric glow. Um, so that, this is atmospheric glow, which is new. And um, so there's a whole load of different uh, variations on what you can do with that kind of glow. I'm just going to show you some very, very, very quickly. Smoky rays, spooky orbs. So the idea is that you just have various different kind of uh, atmospheric glows that you can have. Here's the default again. Um, uh, so the glow level is huge. The intensity down a bit. It's very, very strong there. Um, so there's all of this stuff that's kind of in there that can be added, like smoke and fog, prism and grain. The thing is that stuff like uh, prism does show up in other effects as well. So as well as it being its own thing, it does show up as part of other effects as well. So folks, that's been some of the new stuff that's inside of Boris Effect 2024. Pretty good. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, I like it. So yeah, I know that's the first video I've done in a while and I do promise to do more. I have started many and not finished them, but uh, I particularly love Boris Effects. Uh, optics, so I, I kind of had to make a video on it. I could not make a video on it. Uh, it's genuinely just that nice. So, thanks for taking time to watch this, folks. I will be doing more videos in the future. That is the plan.